Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Joni Young here if you're new and thanks so much for joining me today for this fun painting tutorial of a whimsical little cottage, kind of a little uh, hobbit type of cottage um, in uh, surrounded by a beautiful sunset and some waterfalls here on the side. So I'm gonna just go over the canvas that I'm using really quick. This is an eight by 10 double primed and stretched canvas. I just got it from a Dollarama. You don't need any fancy expensive canvas to paint along with me. I've got a number 16 filbert brush here that I'm gonna start the painting with and the following colors. I'll have a full list below in the description of this video. I've got titanium white, neon yellow warm, neon pink, light olive green, hunter green, turquoise aqua green, Thalo Blue, Brilliant Purple, Burnt Sienna, and Mars Black. So I'm going to start by just getting the canvas a little bit wet. This is going to help me blend my acrylics out easier. So just a little bit of water goes a really long way and is super, super helpful. And I like to mention this at the beginning of my videos because I'm finding more and more of you are, are loving this tip and it's kind of life changing for you learning to paint out there. Um, another thing that you can use that's quicker is just a fine misting spray bottle. Okay, so while this is still wet, I'm just going to start coming in with my brightest color here, my yellow warm. This is a neon color luminous by Holbein but you don't have to have neon colors to paint with me you can just use a bright yellow or orange or any color that you want for your sunset and I'm using a little bit of titanium white as well with a little bit of water in my brush and I'm just going to start diagonally kind of up and down like this creating little streaks across the sky and then not washing my brush out into my white again and some pink. A little bit of water on my brush and I'm going to start from the right side here in the same angle not bothering down here because we're going to have some stairs and water and and plants and stuff okay so what this does this background is a beautiful background for our sky as well as the colors inside the house so the warm light coming from our cozy little cottage here so it serves two purposes now if we want to add a little bit more saturation we can just take a little scoop of each color and just come in over top and layer just for a little bit more don't over blend because it's nice to have those streaks now I'm going to wash my brush out because I've got that warm yellow in there if I take purple now it's going to turn brown that wouldn't be the worst color for adding to the sunset sometimes that's kind of nice but for today's I don't want to have that I just want to come in with my purple here a little bit of purple and I'm going to come right off the corner here far right Following those same diagonal brush strokes. I'm gonna wipe the excess off on a towel, pick up a little bit more, and now I'm gonna come on an angle here and then start gently just fanning it a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush out. Nice clean brush. And the next color I'm going to come in with is turquoise. I'm going to add my turquoise right about halfway, okay? Side to side and then wider. And we're just adding this to start building up our water, waterfalls and, and water. And even though we're going to have um, some bushes and flowers and steps over here. This is, makes for a nice under under painting. I like a little bit of turquoise and cool tones uh, with my leaves and, and bushes. Okay, the next color, 
phthalo blue. I haven't washed my brush out and I'm not adding any water at all to my brush. Okay, so I'm gonna come in right here. Pulling off the edge, pulling in towards the center, load my brush up again. Do the same thing. And then I'm gonna come up here, pick up a little bit more. On either side like that. Okay, so we'll have three areas like this. You can even make them squares or rectangles if you want. And then I'll just use the rest that's in my brush and pull gently out like this. May as well use the rest of it. Okay, for the next color, I'm gonna take Hunter Green. And this time, I'm gonna start tapping. That's why I love a filbert brush. You can use it for so many different techniques. So you can use it for a waterfall and then adding little bushes. So I'm just gonna come in and just tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of phthalo and mix that in. And look at the beautiful, deep, dark, rich color that we get. It's gonna make for some beautiful, dramatic contrast and shadows. And then a little pull and sweep, a little bit more phthalo. And little taps. I'm gonna tap in here. And then I'm gently gonna pull up like this because we need a little bit of shadow under our waterfalls. So just a little bit of phthalo blue and green. And if yours is a little lighter or darker than that, that's just fine too. Okay, I'm gonna load those colors up again on my brush and I'm gonna come in and tap. Lots of tapping. <laughs> A little bit more phthalo. Okay, and now I'm gonna come up and add a little bit roof, so same colors. And the first thing I'm gonna do is start from here and I'm not gonna tap, not yet, I'm gonna create the shape that I want. So we're gonna bring it up and down. So follow this up and then down, making just a little hill like that for our roof. And then tap, 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 tap. And then a little bit more blue right under here where we're going to have some more shadow of that roof hanging over. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm gonna dry this off really quickly and then we'll come in and start adding our next layers, which are gonna be some light olive green highlights here. We'll add our waterfalls and start coming in with the details on our little house. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is start coming in with our waterfalls and I'm gonna use an angle a flat angle brush like this. If you don't have one, you can just use a regular flat brush, fan brush, or even a filbert brush. This one is a number 10. I'm gonna get it wet first. Just wet the bristles a little bit, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of white and turquoise to begin. A Little bit more white. Okay, and I'm gonna start from up here, we're gonna have some cascading waterfalls 
So I'm holding my brush straight up and down like this just to make some narrower ones. And then we'll just start wherever you want to start making them a little bit bigger or on an angle. Just turn your brush a little on an angle like this. Pull and drop. Then a little bit more just straight up and down. It's really fun to play around with these brushes and see what you can create. I'm going to pull it over a little bit more right here. And we're going to start bringing it down into this area here. So we're making different tier levels of these waterfalls. And you see how it shows up much better with a darker background or underneath paint or under painting, same thing. But back here, we want it to be lighter and softer and mistier. That way we get nice perspective and it helps to draw our eyes in here. So I'm gonna add maybe another one right here that comes right down and another one right there. Okay, and then we'll just pull over and drop. And that comes a little bit lower. See how much depth you create by bringing your waterfalls down a little bit lower. You can just change it drastically in a blink of an eye and a few little brush strokes. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull over here a little bit, take a bit more white now. Gently go over these. Now, once this area is all dry, we can even kind of dry brush over with a little bit of white to make those look more in the distance and farther away. I'm just going over these a little bit because it, will, it dries a little bit um, lighter and I want them to show up the highlights on top of the waterfalls to really show up. So it might take a few tries and layers to build it up. Okay, just washing my brush out. And just gonna lightly go over these here. The next color we're gonna be using is light olive green. And I've got a little mini mop brush here that I'm gonna use no water on it at all and i'm going to take some hunter green and light olive green or you can go just straight into the light olive green and skip that one but i like to have a little transition of dark to light so i'm going to start right about here and i'm going to add some this same color same two colors. Look where I'm starting to add it though. Halfway on the darkest color and then a little bit above and over top. This way we build up gradually to our highlights. And then a little bit more. I'm going to come in here and add a little bit as well. Anywhere you want to have a little bit of foliage, right? I'm going to add a little bit of more something down here, but haven't decided just yet what that'll be but I know I left that area for a reason so I'm excited to see what it turns into and yes I'm making this up on the spot I love to just kind of let my imagination go wild and free and and trust the process and where my ideas take me I think that it's really, really fun to do this. And it's also a very healthy exercise for your, your mind and your brain. Like just, it's fine to look at an image and render it as well. 
it's good to do a little bit of both. It's really, really healthy for you. And it's going to be what helps you grow as an artist and take you to the next level. Now with a bit of white and light olive green, we're going to apply our bright highlights. So these I'm going to add right on the top of where we left off and just a little bit over top of the existing color. And a little bit more in here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add the inside of the house here. And I'm going to be using my mini filbert brush. This one is a two. And I'm going to take burnt sienna. And I'm going to go inside and just start going up and down. We can go over part of that green. And I'm going to leave a space for the door right in here. So we're going to go up and over like that. I'm just going over a little bit here so we get some, maybe some shadows. And then I'll add a few leaves and flowers again after. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more burnt sienna and start adding some lines for the stairs. I'll take a little bit of green, light olive green, to add some moss covered steps here. Okay, just washing my brush out. And I'm just gonna carefully take off a little bit of that burnt sienna. And the next color I'm gonna take is my phthalo blue and hunter green. And I'm gonna go around. You can make a perfect circle if you want, depends on what kind of a door you wanna make. Make those color that color again. Hunter green, phthalo blue. Okay, and then I'm going to go outline this window. And if you happen to miss your mark a little bit or go over, I did a little bit. You can just push that paint off. Acrylic's really forgiving. You can catch it right away before it dries, or if it dries too fast, you can just paint over it again. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'll just take that, those colors again, the pink, yellow, and white. And just add the inside colors again for my window. And then smooth that out. Okay, the next color I want to use is turquoise aqua green. And I'm going to go from the top 
go around. I wanted the dark underneath so that we would get a nice 3D look when coming in with our main color here. See how it just pops? And then I'll go across right here. And then come in with a little design, a little line here, one here, and one there. I'm going to add a little bit more burnt sienna inside the door. I'm going to start going up and down like this. And I'm going to go over to my phthalo blue and dab a little bit more shadows in here. Dab, dab, dab. Little taps. Take a little bit more and add a little extra shadow here. And then I'm going to come inside and add a shadow right there. I'm going to take a little bit more of my warm light color here. Dab a little bit more in there. And then I'm going to have, have a little lantern hanging right there. I'll take a touch, just a touch of white. Dab it right there. A little bit more pink and yellow. Make that coral color. I'm going to add a little bit of light to the front step there. And I've got a liner brush. This one is, uh, oh, it's a zero. And I'm going to take some black and burnt sienna. And just go right underneath here. Outline a little bit. And then add some lines for the wood on the door. Outline this side of the door as well. And I'm going to add a little hanger, curve over, add a little top right here, a little bottom right there. Just using black and burnt sienna. You can just use straight black too if you want. Outline. And just add a few little lines like that. 
Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do is with my liner brush, add a little bit of green, both greens, for just a little bit of vines and leaves kind of wrapping around this cute little lantern here. I'll take a little bit of turquoise and then a few more bigger leaves. I'll add them on the other side as well. And then right in here, I'm going to add just a little bit more of my burnt sienna and a little bit of the warm yellow. Mix the two together. And I'm just going to straighten my door out a tiny bit here. Phthalo and burnt sienna and I'll just outline it again but this time not as much because it's almost giving my uh, door a bit of a lean to it so if you've had that happen then you can learn from me showing you how to correct it right here this often happens when I'm filming because I've kind of painting on an angle in order to have my camera placed directly in front so you guys can see it I've got a little spot right there I'm gonna dab with my olive green. And I'll take a little bit more burnt sienna. You can add some lines in if you want. You can have lines going this way. Really, there's so many different ways you could take this painting. I'm gonna add a little bit of turquoise right in here, very carefully on these little lines. I'm gonna add a little handle, a little dab and a little line. And I'll take some black and I'll go on one side just to make it stand out a little bit more and really just kind of look at everything and decide if it needs to be outlined to make it stand out And I'll add just a little bit more right in here. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add a few decorative little boards that come out here or wrought iron work. And then I'll take a little bit of turquoise. And add some little swirls right there. And a little bit more black and turquoise. And just add a little arrow. Okay, I want to add some flowers here now. So with a clean brush, I'm going to take, well, first I'm going to add some blue and hunter green, and I'm just going to start tapping in some leaves. And I have some in here off the side too. And then I'm going to take, without washing my brush off, some pink. And we're just adding little dabs. See, and it's really pretty when that pink picks up a little bit of the blue. So 
a little bit of white in here in with that pink. I'm gonna wash my brush out. And I'll come in and add some over here as well. So I'm gonna take the yellow and the pink. Just change it up a little bit. Just little dabs and tabs. That's all you have to do. You don't have to think about every single petal on a flower. It's just little little dots and dabs everywhere in little groups to create some pretty flowers. I'll have some on this side over here. Who doesn't like flowers? leading up on the pathway. So pretty. And maybe a little purple in there. A little bit of purple and pink. And we can add a few here as well. A little bit more purple. I'm going to take some phthalo with my purple and tap in. A few down in here as well. A little bit more of the purple. This is just like a pastel purple, but it's called Brilliant Purple, and many of the colors, including this one that I'm using today, are by Liquitex, and the neon ones are, of course, by Holbein, which I use in most of my videos and mention. I have a link down below if you guys are interested in, in purchasing them. I don't make any money off of uh, the links that I have. I just like to share the products that I really enjoy using um, with you guys as well. So we have this other area in here and I think it would be really neat to have another little opening or bridge type of um, area down here. So I'm going to take some black, blue, and green. And I'm just going to follow the shape that's already here. A little bit of burnt sienna. be another little um, part of the house. I'm going to switch brushes over to my flat one. This is uh, number 10, Burnt Sienna in Black. I'm going to come right in front here. bit more burnt sienna. I'm going to go back over to my little mop brush here. I'm going to start adding some vines and Maybe some flowers. Maybe we'll have a little garden entrance right here that takes us into a little secret. I think it's a little secret passage.
Well, it's so much fun making up your own little worlds, isn't it? And I gotta thank you guys for allowing me to be able to bring these videos to you. It's because of you that I'm able to do it. So without you guys supporting me on Patreon and watching and sharing my videos here, I wouldn't be able to. So thank you all very much. I have a little bit more shadow here with those same colors. And then a little bit of our light olive green to add our highlights to or with. Just a little bit, see? No water at all. my brush out and take a little bit of white now along with my light olive green tap 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 and add a few more highlights here A little bit on the stairs. I'm going to add a few flowers. We'll add that pink and purple. We've got a little bit up there already, so let's just continue along. I have a few coming down off the edge here. And then a little bit of white, a little bit more pink. You can use a little liner brush again for this. I'm just using my little filbert. It works as well. wash that brush out and I think it would be kind of pretty to have some floating lanterns in here. So what I like to do for my floating lanterns is take pink, yellow, and I'll have little dabs in here getting smaller and smaller. And then our larger one right here. <laughs> they look like little pumpkins right now. I'm gonna take a little bit of white and dab just inside, leaving the rest a bit darker. I think I want to set another one over there. That might give us a little bit more interesting perspective. Like they're coming from back here and floating along through here. So the next thing you want to do is just, as we're adding these, remember to add some light reflecting on the water. I'm going to switch over to my liner brush and I'm going to add a little bit more around the edges here. I'll be able to use this brush to create smaller details for these smaller ones back here. Now maybe these, this light is faintly casting a glow on the inside here. So let's just pull out a little bit of that color that's left in our brush. Then a tiny bit of white to create that glow just off the top and then 
down the center. A little bit more yellow to warm that up. And then with a little bit of sienna and black, I'm just going to create a little opening there. Oh, not a line straight across, but just kind of comes down slightly. And then I'm going to outline. Oops, just a tiny bit of water on my brush. Gonna give us some more shadows and depth. Making these lanterns look a little bit more 3D. Yeah, just a little bit more color to these ones back here. And I'm going to add a little bit of white, yellow, and pink to the top here. To break up that turquoise color a little bit. The next color I'm going to take with a clean brush, a little bit of turquoise and phthalo blue. We're going to go underneath and just kind of in and around here, creating some more shadows for our lanterns so they look brighter and they show up a little bit more. Add some phthalo, black and green. And just add some in between the stairs. Okay, just a couple more things before I call this painting done. Back over to my flat brush, a little bit of brilliant purple and phthalo. That phthalo is so strong, you just need the tiniest amount. Okay, and then I'm going to come in right off the side here, like we did at the beginning, but I just want to add a little bit more. I'm going to rinse my brush out and then soften, soften, soften. A little bit of white. One last thing I almost forgot. I want to add a little chimney. So I'm going to take black burnt sienna and I think we'll add our little chimney here. That way when I add a little puff of smoke, it'll really show up. So just a little line on the top, like a tiny little rectangle. And then let's have some leaves on it as well. So a little bit of the greens. Bit more of 
of that light olive green. And then some burnt sienna. A little dab, dab, dab. It kind of looks like bricks, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually going to use my little filbert brush for the smoke. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of that purpley color. And I'm just going to steady with my pinky here a little wiggle and twist and scumble around. There. Now this painting is all done. I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm just gonna, before I say bye, I'll just set this back a little bit further so you can see what it looks like from a distance. I'm really happy with this one. It was so fun. I'm glad I got to share it with you. And thanks for being here and joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and join Patreon for more. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Have a wonderful day. Bye everybody.